there was a almost overnight requirement of switch over to online education. As mm -hmm. a result, there was a humongous pressure on how do we actually convert all the uh, education from offline to online mode. In a technical institution like IIT, it's a classroom education constitutes to only about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the total education. Remaining education is because of peer learning, because of assignments, because of the uh, labs which are carried out, and because of various other structured labs. Now, these are not possible in an offline scenario. All our labs were closed and therefore labs could not be conducted. They have to be conducted in offline mode. Uh, even the virtual labs were not a possibility because look and feel is not the same. Somebody has to actually operate on the instruments and the instruments are not possible to be operated. So therefore, the online education in some sense was only a substitute for classroom education. And that was the biggest challenge. Um, I think what we did was all those courses which required an offline component, we postponed it for future. And we said we will actually hold it as and when the relaxations actually come in, as and when people get vaccinated and such kind of things happen. As a result, for almost like one and a half year, we did not have any of our offline uh, classes and offline um, labs. Gradually, we started bringing our postgraduate students and PhD students who actually were highly dependent on the labs because of their research work. And then subsequently, we started opening up our labs with 50% capacity to other students. In order to do that, we actually brought students in batches. First, we brought only those students who were in the final year and whose graduation was dependent on finishing the labs. So they came in the campus, they went on doing their labs, and the labs were basically with 50% attendance. If in a lab there can be 40 students in the normal scenario, we allowed only 20 students to come, and the labs were done both morning, afternoon, and no breaks were given. So in other words, um, lab days were increased, even though to a student number of labs remained the same per week. And that's how we managed the labs. And the next year we brought uh, the students who went into final years and maybe some more in the third year. Today, all our labs are actually fully functional, except for the first year students who are likely to come in March of this year. Uh, so therefore, all our labs, we actually manage in this way. We, for peer interaction, we created groups and invited students to actually take active part in these groups. Uh, these were all administered by the students and they did have exceptionally well. Uh, so that's how we actually could do whatever we could, even though experience was not the same as of the offline education. Online education was largely uh, acceptable. It did create a lot of pressure on students. It also created a lot of pressure on uh, faculty members who had to prepare the um, lecture notes and such kind of things well ahead of in time, uh, deliver it using web conferencing method, virtual conferencing method, video conferencing methods, and Therefore, it actually created quite a lot of uh, very interesting um, additional overheads. But I think overall, we did reasonably well, though even uh, it could have been a little bit hectic, uh, but that's what it was. So we coped pretty well. Now we have moved over completely to offline mode. Educational institutes, uh, there is a, a lot of data, of course, but uh, uh, the data which is supposed to be secure is largely for internal consumption and not for external consumption. Data which is supposed to be public, like thesis, thesis titles, and such kind of thing, which are supposed to be public, um, 
there is no much no so much of computer security dependence on it except the fact that they may be uh, tempered they may be modified uh, apart from that somebody looking at the data is not a problem so all our data which were related to academic records which are related to um, hr records and all that they always remain internal they were not exposed to outside world and they continue to remain internal um, information out of that data which was to be generated uh, and to be looked at by student we mail that to the students for on a per student basis so therefore their course uh, their course notes their mark sheets their uh, certificates and all that were mailed to them on a per student basis and therefore the student will get its own data internal data we never expose and we in general do not expose to outside however there is still a problem and the internal data could be actually looked at uh, you know for against internal attacks and that is a severe problem because the students were not there because others were not there the internal data fairly remained secure in fact if at all data security probably would be an issue when everybody is inside and the hacking attempts may happen but we do reasonably well by access controls by logins and such kind of thing keep our databases very secure we do take backup and uh, regular backups and such kind of thing so our data actually remains fairly secure even though there is going to be a good amount of uh, uh, offline and online mix but i think uh, mostly online education is going to become lesser and lesser in practice offline education is going to increase uh, and therefore in next one year our highest priority is to actually get back to the normalcy as soon as possible however i also see a silver lining in this and that silver lining is also very important to understand because in a classroom education when a teacher teaches he uses a blackboard whiteboard projection screens and variety of other things what online education has been able to do is teachers desktop teachers uh, boards writing boards and teachers tablets actually brought it to the students computers and the students screens we believe that that is actually going to be a very interesting technology that will be in use where students even in the class can look at either the classroom boards or classroom projections and others those who want their laptops and other things they can still see teachers writing teachers screens and all that on their desktops even the blackboards and whiteboards in my opinion in tomorrow's classrooms will probably disappear they will only have a projection screens and therefore classrooms will start looking much more elegant much more simple with multiple screens with multiple mechanisms it becomes harder for classrooms and teacher to organize things properly something is on the left something is on the right and all that now everything will be equally visible to every student so this is what is in my opinion going to be the future of the technology and that is what we are readying ourselves to adopt a teacher who has been trained to do only offline education like me a feedback from students both in terms of body language as well as in the communication is very very important to figure out how students are able to cater to the classroom load how students are faring and understanding the class and that's a very very important aspect now in absence of students physically being there in the class you are actually talking to a machine and when you're talking to a machine you really don't have too much of feedback that comes to you uh, from the students their body language their eye movements and such kind of things and therefore you have to actually work with a mechanism such that this is actually avoided this feedback is not there now one other method that we adopted was students were online 
they typically will keep their cameras and mics in switch off mode. So randomly one would ask some question or some uh, you know, uh, statement would be made for a particular student to answer. And that student would then answer. This way the student's alertness will remain and the students remain alert. At the same time, it also gave a feedback to the teacher how students are able to cope up with the class. Now, having said that, it also means that there is a uh, reduced pace of instruction because you have to ask questions a lot. I mean, if you don't, then the instruction goes much faster than an offline thing. But if you ask, instruction goes slower than offline thing and you have to repeat many things. This has been our experience and that's the way we cater to. I think in the hybrid mode, this is exactly what we are going to see. We are actually going to see people in offline will probably learn better because of the body language and other kind of thing. People in online mode will probably have difficulty, but those difficulties can possibly be catered uh, for by providing a small tutorial and discussion sections where um, students can interact with a teaching assistant or even the faculty member on a smaller class basis with everything on, audio on, video on, and therefore slightly better communication can take place and students are willing to take their doubts to the next level and get them clarified. Um, things like Zoom, things like Google Meet, things like WebEx, and various other platforms which were used uh, they all had some difficulty or the other because video conferencing was not a mainstream tool set for holding conferences or holding discussions online. Suddenly, it was a need. And uh, what we did, we actually worked out with Cisco. We worked with uh, Google and we talked to them, worked with them and said what kind of features we want. And to be fair, these companies actually very quickly adapted their systems to bring them at par for education purposes. Today, Zoom is much better than the Zoom that was there two years back. Today's WebEx is much, much better than what it was two years back. Today's Google Meet is much better than what it was. In fact, Google Hangout was not even considered to be a video conferencing solution at that time. So things actually improved a lot. Now, back home, we needed to have these kind of infrastructure available. There is a, a free version available for students to access, but there is also a paid version available for is, uh, academic institutions and others to provide instructions. And we actually went for paid versions of WebEx and worked with the Cisco and others to improve their features. Now, this is about the video conferencing system, but there were other methods as well. Like for example, we also needed to do a white box or whiteboard sharing, screen sharing and such kind of thing, which were not there in earlier systems. And that was a big bottleneck. Um, but then I think many systems came up very quickly incorporating these uh, screen sharing and whiteboard sharing. Whiteboard sharing is important because teacher can actually have a same feeling as if he's writing on his laptop screen or a tablet screen, which is then delivered to the student end as a handwritten thing, which students actually see and find it much more easy to understand because it actually gives the time analysis also or time frame method also of uh, drawings and all that as opposed to projecting them from a PowerPoint presentation. So many of these things actually happen. And of course we have other things like databases, um, maintaining um, examination records, evaluation records and such kind of things. Uh, making uh, channels for communication like email and WhatsApp and all that for conducting exams. 
conducting uh, question answer sessions and such things. I think the most interesting thing that we adopted was examination system. Examination system for us was a, a WhatsApp based examination where we made small, small batches, much similar to a room based uh, batches of uh, students uh, as it would happen in an examination system. And to these batches, instead of exposing the entire question paper one day or two day or few minutes in advance, we expose one question at a time. And within five to seven minutes, the student was supposed to write the answer on a piece of paper, take the photograph and return it back on WhatsApp. So the question exposure was only for five to 10 minutes. And during that time, the student was supposed to write it, solve it, write it and send it back to the instructor. This kind of helped us in making sure that our examinations were fair, they were free of biases, and everybody had the same method and the same environment to solve the exam paper. So this actually helped us a lot. And WhatsApp actually kept track of when the students saw the exam question and uh, when did he submit the exam answer and those kind of things. So therefore, we could actually maintain the time very well, and we could actually um, do the thing based on these timings, whether late submission were allowed or not allowed and such kind of things. I think going forward, such kind of tools are absolutely, absolutely essential. Maybe more comprehensive tool can be made so that things can be even better.